Hey guys, welcome back. We're gonna do the last two. Again, you should be familiar with two of the four and be ready to answer those questions. The same or similar questions with the numbers changed and the context changed slightly. Okay, so our question 1.13 says a back-to-back. -back. We've not done this in class, but we a lot of people looked at this thing. So we want to think of this as a regular stem and leaf plot, right? And it looks like we're looking at brands of batteries. And imagine that this is not here. This is brand Y, okay? And this is brand X, right? Same stem and leaf plot, 1122. Ooh, this is a split stem, 4455. We learned about that, a split stem, right? And as we look at this, we say, and I'm going to go back and erase this for just a second because I want to look at the data. A back-to-back -back does something efficient. It, it keeps you from having to draw this twice. So if I look at this number, it looks like brand X had a battery that lasted 30 years, 31, 31, 32, and then 35 years, 37, 37, 39, and 39. Then in the 40s, it had a battery last 41, 42, 42, and 43. Then it had one last 54 hours and then 55 hours, okay? So if this throws you off, you can rewrite it and just compare the two um, stem and leaf plots. But a back-to-back -back is to save room and write less, okay? So this is a split stem because the stems have been split. I've got the lower ones and the upper ones. And so there's no number here because they must not have had zero, one, two, three, or four, meaning a battery that lasted 10, 11, 12, 13, or 14, okay? In that lower bin. All right, so it says, what is the longest that any battery lasts. We notice that it's definitely this battery here, 55 in brand X. All right, so we wanna say, restating the question, the longest, I'm just restating what it's asking, the longest any, any battery lasted was 55. And I look at my key, Ooh, it's not 55 hours. It says a four slash two would actually represent a bin width. So five slash five, five slash five would represent 50, 550 to 559 hours. That's what that would signify, okay? So the longest entry battery lasted was 5. somewhere between 550 to 559 hours from, and I'm gonna say, it doesn't ask, but from brand X. Okay, so question number B says, give some reasons why you would prefer brand X, give some reasons why you would prefer brand Y. So this is the Barry Bonds versus Mark McGuire. There could be reasons why you like brand X and they want you to give those reasons, and there could be reasons you like brand Y, okay? So here are some of those reasons. It says brand X, we notice, doesn't have a low end at all. Its lowest one was 30. It also reigns supreme with the highest, right? So it's not going to have any duds. I guess it's going to last at least 300 hours. Here, they had a few, not a lot, but a few that lasted 170, 220, 260. Okay, so that's probably the biggest thing brand X goes. It reigns supreme with the highest and it also doesn't have a low end, okay? So as we look at this, it said, we'd say give some reasons why someone would prefer it. So someone 
may prefer brand X because it has a higher minimum lifetime. Like its minimum is higher, 30 is its minimum. And the other thing they could like it for um, is that it was most consistent. And so it's notice that the other thing this one has going for it is that it lasted from 17 all the way to 50. So you never know what you're gonna get with brand Y. Here, this was much narrower and it was especially easy when it's back to back. Notice that this range is a lot smaller than this range, okay? So, it's we're thinking that someone else would like it because its lifetimes are more consistent. That's the lower the lower the range, the more consistent we would say. All right. Now, can we make an argument for the other brand, brand Y? Someone may prefer brand Y because notice it actually it looks like it has a higher median or typical. So the typical brand Y battery lasts longer. If we broke down the numbers and looked for the median. It looks like the median here, and we can do that, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it looks like the median here is 39. So a typical battery is 30, lasts 39. Now it's got some outliers, so you should use median, not mean, right? Now let's look for the median in Y. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and 43 is the median. So a typical battery in brand Y does last longer. So that's why someone might prefer that brand because it has a higher median lifetime. All right, now let's check out number 14 and we'll call it a day. Catherine and Anna suspect that athletes, i.e. students who have been on at least one varsity team, typically have a faster reaction time than other students. To test this theory, they gave an online reflex test to separate random samples of 33 varsity athletes and 29 other students at their school. So these are the people they talk to. So these are the athletes, right? And these are the non-athletes. Here are parallel box plots and numerical summaries of the data on their reaction times. So reaction time in times, just like speed, you want the lowest time possible because you did it the quickest. So as we look here, a typical student reacted at around 300, a typical athlete reacted much quicker, right? We see that here in the mean is different, right? And we see that in the median, right? So it asks us, are these numerical summaries, statistics, or parameters explain? These are statistics because they are numbers that describe the sample, okay? So I'm not sure we've drilled. I've been talking back and forth, I think, a lot on every unit. I don't know if I've emphasized this, but what does the word statistic mean and what is a parameter? Well, a parameter is something that we want to know about everyone. So when you think about the word parameter, you think about all. So if I wanna make a conclusion about all students, 
then I may take statistics. And so when I take statistics, then I take a sample of students. And I try to take a sample in order to make some type of a conclusion about a group of all of them. So that's what they're actually asking us here. They're saying, are these summary statistics or are these parameters? All of this data was just collected on these individuals. So these were, this is data collected from a sample. And so these are in fact, um, these numerical summaries are called statistics. because they come from a sample. All right, B, write a few sentences, a few, okay, so that's three or more, comparing the distribution of the reaction time for the two types of students. Okay. So we definitely have a few outliers here, right? And we notice that the distribution of the reaction time for the athletes would be slightly skewed, right? Noticing that this side of the graph is somewhat smaller and this one's longer, right? This side of the graph is actually about the same size as that side of the graph, right? What are some other things we notice? Well, we notice that um, as I said, this side looks about the same. That means it's roughly symmetrical. However, it has two high outliers. So what you're looking at is a way to show outliers on a box plot, which we didn't do in class, but you may have seen this other times. So instead of extending this whisker, we stop the whisker at um, the lowest one that isn't considered an outlier, and then any outliers, we just make an asterisk. This allows us to see outliers easily. And this is called a modified box plot. Okay? Now, what else do we know? Well, we have to cover the whole thing, S-O-C-V, right, with our context. So we talked about our center, right? our median. We got one of these is skewed, so we should probably focus on the median. We could also compare the mean, but one of them is skewed, so we should stick to median. And we also have our IQR, right? I can take quarter three minus quarter one. So giving us some room to write, We want to say, using context, the distribution of, what is it we measured? Reaction times for, now which one is it? So we're gonna talk about shape, right? the distribution of reaction times for diversity group is slightly skewed, right? Because those numbers to the right are bringing it up. Compared to The other group which is roughly symmetrical and we want to talk about outliers Varsity 
add one high outlier while the other group add two high outliers. We want to talk about the center, right? Um, as we compare, as we said earlier, one group is slower, right? So the other group, or you could say the athletes are faster, either way would be fine. The other group tends to have slower reaction times compared with the varsity. Right? Then it says SOCV, variability. So we have to either talk about the range or the interquartile range. We can't really talk about the range is like, I've got a lot of outliers here. So it makes more sense to talk about the width of the box, the interquartile range, right? So let's go ahead and calculate those and figure out which one, but we know which one. Yeah, it looks like the student one would be slightly wider than the varsity one, right? And we see in total that this one has much more variability, max to min, than the other one. Okay, so then the varsity does. So I'll say again, the other group had higher variability than the varsity. with an IQR of one hundred versus I wrote that number down, hold on. Well done, guys. See you next time.